What is the volume of the largest cone that can be inscribed in a sphere? Whenever I'm asked to inscribe a shape in another shape, I like to draw it out for myself. Here's the sphere. The cone, or at least the tip of the cone, is going to have to be at one corner of the sphere. Then it's going to come down on two diagonals, and then around the sphere, you're going to have the base of the cone. That base of the cone is like a cross section of the sphere right through there. Now, the question is, how can we relate the size of this cone to different dimensions? Well, first of all, I want to point out that this cone is taller than the radius of the sphere you're putting it in. And how much taller the cone is than that radius is going to be the variable that I want to change, this amount x. x can be between 0 if you don't want the cone to come down beyond r at all. And it can be up to and including a full r. If x is a full r though, the cone is just this straight line down the cone. In any case, or uh, the straight line down the sphere. The point is, I'm going to change this variable x, and the taller the cone is, the thinner it's going to become, and the smaller x is, the fatter the cone will become, but shorter as well. So, the question is, how do we get the volume of this cone? Well, the volume of any cone is one-third pi r squared h, where h is the height of the cone. For us, the height of the cone is the radius plus this variable x that we have. But x is the variable that we have to adjust to optimize the volume of the cone. I probably shouldn't be using little r here because I'm trying to say that the radius of the sphere is r. I'm actually talking about the radius of the cone, that's little r there. And the radius of the cone is this amount from the edge to the middle. Now, how are we going to get an expression for that? Well, I have a treat for you. This portion of x that I've already shown for you is going to be translated down here. The amount or radius of the cone that I've drawn here is here. And the distance from this point to this point happens to be a little r for the sphere because the distance from the center of the sphere to any point on its outer surface is also r. Yeah, that's the key to answering this question. In fact, little r is a constant, and we want to express capital R in terms of that. With Pythagorean theorem, it's the square root of c squared minus a squared, or rather, capital R, the radius of the cone, is the square root of the radius of the sphere squared minus x squared. And again, x can be anything we're trying to solve for x. So the volume of the cone is one third pi, the square root of r squared minus x squared, all squared. Oh, that's convenient. I'm gonna like that, r plus x. Yes. Let's simplify this. I got pi over three times r squared minus x squared times r plus x. I'm actually going to expand that a little further. I have r cubed plus r squared x minus r x squared minus x cubed. Now, that's important because I'm trying to take the derivative, or rather how I'm going to optimize for the maximum volume of the cone is to take dv by dx. r is a constant. It's the radius of our sphere. Maybe it was 5, maybe it was 8. To take the derivative of this expression with respect to x, we have to remember that r is a constant. So, the constant that was factored out of the whole expression stays. The derivative of r cubed, though, is the derivative of a constant. That's 0. The derivative of this is the constant that is in front of x, which gives us just r squared. The derivative of this with respect to x, bring the 2 down and notch the exponent down to 1, I get minus 2rx. 
and I can bring the three down here. The derivative of x cubed is three x squared. I hope that's not a surprise for you. The idea here is that to optimize or maximize the volume of the cone, I need to set the derivative equal to zero. The pi over three does not affect that. So really I'm setting r squared minus two rx minus three x squared equal to zero. I believe I could factor this with decomposition. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative three and add to negative two. That's negative three and positive one. I'm breaking my middle term, negative two rx into minus three rx and plus one rx. And again, this is just gonna be the motions of factoring. We've got, I'm gonna factor a common r out of that. That's r minus three x. Factor an x out of this, that's r minus three x. My brackets match. And so this factors to r plus x times r minus three x equals zero. That means that this is solved and the volume of the cone is maximized whenever r is negative x, but that's out of the domain. There is the domain, so I don't care. Or when r equals 3x, put another way, x is one third of the radius of the sphere. That sounds right to me. Because even in the cone that I drew here, x is some fraction of r, Apparently the magic fraction that maximizes the volume of the cone is one third of R. Cool. Now the only other thing is that the, the question originally asked what the volume of the largest cone was. So I should take that and plug it back into the original function. This one looked best for me. I'm going to bring out a different color here. Let's use purple. So the volume of the cone that maximizes the its own volume <laughs> inscribed inside a sphere is pi over three times r squared, I'm gonna keep, minus x squared. Minus this squared is gonna be minus a ninth r squared. And then over here I have r plus a third of r. At this point I'm just cleaning it up. So if you're happy with this, you're done. But I have eight ninths of r squared here. I have four thirds of r here. This gives me 32 pi over 81 r cubed. Cool. So the volume of a cone inscribed inside a sphere at its maximum size gives us a volume of 32 pi over 81 r cubed. Compare that to the volume of the sphere itself which is four pi over three or four thirds pi r cubed. Uh, if I was going to rewrite that, I would probably make multiply the top and bottom by 27. Four times 27 is 108. So the volume of the cone inscribed inside of the sphere is 32 108 the size of the sphere it was inscribed in. Anyways, all that extra stuff wasn't necessary. We got the volume of the cone, we're done here. And you can do this for any cone if they give you an actual radius like 10 centimeters or 5.7 meters. It's just everywhere you have R, you have the number that they gave you. Piece of cake, best of luck.